Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen. How the hell are you all doing today? Welcome back to the podcast. I am Johnny No Cash, and you are listening to a brand new episode of Life with Johnny No Cash. And the interesting thing about today's episode is I am brutally fucking sick. I feel like shit today. So if you're watching this and you're like, God damn, what the fuck happened to this guy's face? <laughs> It's because I'm really, really sick today. Uh, I'm going to get into all of this. It's actually an interesting story and something I'm very proud of, but uh, I'm going to talk about that. That's something I've never really kind of considered when living in a van. Like, what happens whenever you fucking are just under the weather, like flu-type sick in such a small space? I want to talk about that today and uh, definitely about an accomplishment that I'm working at right now, but... Before I do, once again, you guys, thank you so much for your concerns regarding the uh, theater incident at the Batman last week. I think it turned out for the best. You know, um, nobody was hurt. The The individual involved was taken away uh, safely, quietly. Nobody, there was no scene made. Uh, I think it really turned out the best possible way it could have. And who knows what would have happened. I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe he was just going to twiddle the knife, you know, for the duration of the film. I have no idea, but I wasn't going to take any fucking chances with this guy. Everyone's going through so much these days mentally and trying to like fit back into society again and just kind of go back to that norm uh, that we were used to. So, you know, I'm placing no blame. But either way, don't be an idiot. Don't be flicking a fucking knife out when you're watching a movie. It's just stupid and you look like an asshole. And if you're sitting by me, you're getting taken away by the fucking cops. So there you have it. Um, And you guys were great. Thank you once again, like I said, for the support. Uh, I got so many messages regarding that. And uh, you guys seem to think that I did the right thing. So cheers. I think so too. Nobody was hurt. Everything was smooth fucking sailing, unlike my headache right now. So without further ado, let's jump into being fucking sick. And I'll tell you why I'm sick. It's an interesting fucking story here, folks. This isn't just your average one, but something kind of hit me the other day and I needed to make a change. So here we go. I'm living in a van playing outlaw tune. Life with Johnny No Cash. Smoking them smokes and drinking that booze. Life with Johnny No Cash. Where I go, how the fuck don't know I'm off the grid on Dusty Rose. There ain't no better way of eating beans. So I'm currently just hanging out on the side of the street. If you've been keeping up with my podcast, I have stayed here before. I'm actually just outside of Queen Elizabeth Park in Vancouver, uh, not too far from some really close friends of mine. So worst case scenario, if I needed something or if I needed some help in whatever, I'm not too far from some friends. So I've been here for, uh, I stayed here last night. And previously, I've just been kind of staying all over Vancouver. Uh, luckily, Vancouver isn't as strict. I don't, f- I haven't found as Victoria. It seems like parking is a lot more free for all. Now, I'm not. Don't quote me. Don't fucking come to Vancouver and be like, "Oh, Johnny, no cash, so I could park whatever." And I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. All I'm saying is, I have had no problems as of late. I'm really lucky that, you know, I haven't had any bylaw officers pounding on my fucking door, knock on wood. Um, So we'll see. I'm probably going to stay here for one more night. I have an interview. uh, This this uh, this lady is starting up a YouTube channel about uh, van lifers and people living on boats and in cars and in vans. And uh, she contacted me and she's actually coming here later tonight to do a two hour video interview. And a little tour. So I will keep you up to date with that uh, when it is released. I have a feeling that she's releasing this as a series uh, come the fall. So it could be a while. So don't hold your breath. So a lot's happened um, since the last time we talked. Um, I ended up going to see the Batman finally. Nothing fucking bad happened. If anything, the opposite happened. I actually just walked right the fuck in. Nobody even luck- uh, wanted a ticket. My free tickets. My coupons. They didn't take it. So, I mean, 
I walked right in, right past the fucking concierge, went right to the theater. I even took three fucking smoke breaks during the film. And uh, nobody fucking questioned me. I don't know. Um, maybe that's the karma. I have no fucking clue. But I got to say, yeah, the Batman, I don't know. I'm not a huge, huge superhero fan. Um, as I said, I'm a big Superman fan. Um, Batman doesn't really appeal to me much, but uh, it was fine. It was it was not anything to, you know, write home about. I don't think I remembered the film about an hour after uh, we left. It's fucking long. It's really fucking long. But again, to each their own, man. Some people dig this shit. Some people like it. And that's cool. But uh, I don't think I'd be watching it again. It just didn't have enough charm. It was lacking uh, a lot of depth. It was pretty one-dimensional and very dark. So, I don't know. That's my review of the Batman, and I'm not going to be turning this podcast into a movie review <clears throat> uh, content at all. But I just wanted to let you know because a lot of people had, had asked, "What did you think of what you saw so far?" And that's my thoughts. It's it's fine. I mean, Hollywood fucking sucks these days, and fuck them all. Uh, it's you know, it's just a bunch of rich assholes who uh, get what they want when they want, and uh, you know, um, they, I don't know. I, Hollywood's a very different place than when I was growing up, man, with fucking Van Damme and good old Schwarzenegger and Stallone. Th things have changed. But uh, either way, we probably won't be seeing them in the theaters for a long time. So I wanted to talk to y'all about um, what's going on with me here. Um, yeah, this is big. This is fucking big. I, um, I went downtown Vancouver and I ended up going out to a, a, a bar. Met up with some friends, tied one on, asked out the bartender. She said no. Um, you know, the usual. And I ended up sleeping in the alley that way. I had parked um, just down this kind of side street, and it fucking sucked. I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning to jackhammers. Like, this city is just always under construction. F since the, the, you know, six months ago when I first arrived in Vancouver for the first time, this fucking city is just, it's nonstop noise. And sirens and just fucking dump trucks. It's it's awful. So if you want peace and quiet, this is the last fucking city to live in. This is worse than Toronto, I'll tell you that right now. <clears throat> so I mean, I woke up, I was feeling like shit. I had drank quite a bit at the uh the old pub. A lot. <laughs> Way more than I, but again, I haven't really been able to do this since the terminal. Like we're finally getting into a spot where I can go out and I can, you know, kind of treat myself from time to time, you know, chat with some of the locals, you know, figure out where some cool spots are. I was jamming with a couple homeless guys that, uh, they, one guy was doing a freestyle while playing the guitar. I was doing the drums, man. It was great. I'm just so happy to finally kind of get back into that kind of street life. I really fucking miss it. And it was a great time. Yeah, sure. I got rejected by the bartender rightfully so because I was shit faced and nobody wants to. Anyway, that's a, that's another story altogether. <laughs> so, but it was great outside of the fact that I woke up and I was just like pounding headache, feel, felt like shit right in this alleyway, fucking jackhammers going off. And I ended up having to get the hell out of there as soon as humanly possible. And something hit me, man. Something fucking hit me. Um, I needed to make a change. I don't know what's, what's kind of come over me in the last couple days. But I needed to make a change in my life. And as you know, I am a big fucking drinker and I'm also a big fucking smoker. It's just, you know, when I grew up in the country, that's all the kids did. You know, it was just something we did. We smoked, we drank, we hung out at the corner stores, we smoked pot. We were the bad kids. Anything to do with being a bit of a rebel... We did. It was just something that really attracted not just me, but pretty much all the punk rockers in our high school. And I got hooked on smoking in grade nine, I believe. So, I mean, what are you, 13 at that point? I've been smoking for a long fucking time. And I love smoking. I fucking love it. It's just so social. You meet people that have same interests, especially if you're out like in a smoking area or on the street and you're just hacking a dart and somebody's there and needs a lighter. You got something in common. Um, 
I loved it. I really fucking love smoking. I like the action of it. It makes you feel good. And to be perfectly honest, man, it kind of rem- reminds me of the old days where like badasses used to smoke. I don't know what the fuck changed, man, but something the other day, I believe it was Friday, I was like, I got to stop. I got to fucking stop smoking. Um, I woke up. I had four cigarettes in my pack. I thought today is the day that I'm going to do this. Uh, I smoked them all. I went to the community center, which isn't too far from here, and I had a shower and kind of got all cleaned up, ready for the day. And instantly at that point, I walked out. Now, I know that you're probably going to be like, really, man? Really? Why are you doing this? You have to really understand. I fucking, I was, I'm addicted to nicotine. Like brutally fucking addicted to nicotine. So I did need some kind of, I guess, replacement. So I... I decided to get a fucking vape. I know it's it's as hipster as it fucking gets. I feel like such a tool even talking about it. But I was losing my breath. You know, the inside of my van was really starting to smell. Um, and I was just, uh, I don't know. Something just over hit me. Something fucking just hit me that I needed to make a change. I've been smoking for well over 20 years. And I don't know. And I think that's the thing, is if you smoke and you're like, no, I'm not ready to quit right now, you got to wait until you are ready to put in the effort. Don't be like, man, I still love smoking, but I'll just quit because it's something to do. It's going to be so much more difficult. I think I was ready. It just kind of, I, I was ready to give it a shot. I've never even really tried to quit smoking before. I had bought the patch. Um, I would bought the gum. None of that shit works, man. Um, Well, for me, anyway. And I just needed to make a change. So the reason why I'm sick is I'm going through the smoker flu. Man, I mean, even though I'm still getting nicotine from the vape, there's still so many other toxins that are in tobacco that I'm not getting. And my body is just like, what the fuck is going on, man? What is going on? Where's that shit that you used to give me every day? Not every day, but every like fucking 20 minutes. I was a big smoker. I was smoking at least 30 smokes a day. A day. You know how expensive that is? Out here in BC, a pack of cigarettes is $16. So when you do the math, I was basically smoking like $22 worth a day. That's fucked. That's so much money. And I was noticing, I was losing my breath. I wasn't able to. uh, Smoking always took fucking precedent over anything. I'd always have a smoke before I started to work. I'd always have a smoke after if I accomplished something. I'd always kind of reward myself with a smoke. And I don't know. I just had to fucking give it a shot. So I spent 30 bucks on this fucking vape, and it comes with like, these pods, I guess. I know nothing about vaping, so if if you yourself are a vapor and I'm saying things that <laughs> like it doesn't make any sense, it's because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. This is brand new to me. All I know is that I need the nicotine for right now so I can hopefully stop smoking, save some fucking money, save my lungs, save the, you know, what little time I've got left on this planet. And in all honesty, it really doesn't come down to the health thing. It really comes down to just like, I needed a new chapter. You know, I needed to really test myself. Um, when I when you're out here alone, you don't have motivation from your friends, your 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 family, your peers. Uh, nothing. It's all on you. You need to kind of be the one that jumps off that diving board that decides to do these things. You don't really have that kind of support system. Uh, when I was living in a city where I had friends and I had accomplices and whatnot, accomplices, acquaintances, (laughs) accomplices. But so I am fucking sick as a dog. This all happened last night. I was standing around. I was. Uh, I, I just bought a new program for an editing software so I can start getting better at that. Um, and I just started getting a headache. I started feeling like shit. My inside. I had a huge meal last night too. I needed it. I haven't eaten very well in a while. Um, so it was really nice to have a really big meal, but God damn, man, I woke up today at 4 AM tossing and turning soaked. The bed was fucking completely soaked, just feeling like shit. And I was wondering, I was like, is this fucking COVID? 
is this like a normal flu? Um, and I started researching like what's some of the symptoms somebody might have after quitting smoking. And it turns out that there's this smoker's flu that literally every single thing that I'm feeling was in that list. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that I've got the smoker's flu. I'm really fucking hoping this doesn't last too long, man, because I feel like fucking shit. My nose is running too. Of course, if I go into any shops, they're going to be looking at me like I got the fucking plague. And we'll see. We'll see how long this lasts. It said online that it could last up to two weeks. And this is where I want to ask you guys the question, because I know a lot of you guys are either smokers or ex-smokers. Please let me know how you kind of overcame this awful addiction. I'm saying awful because I know it's awful, but I still say that smoking is fucking awesome. I fucking love the action of smoking. I love everything about it, but it's just time to move on. It's time to challenge myself into a new chapter. But I do have to ask you, like, if you quit, how did you fucking quit? Cold turkey? Did you use the patch? Did you use gum? Did you uh, just, you know, start smoking less in a day? Or did you try the vape? I'd really like some advice here because, again... I did this all on my own. This wasn't due to talking with somebody about, you know, kind of convincing me to do this. This was all on me, baby. And I'm hoping to sweet shit that I can do it. This is day three. You're probably thinking, dude, you're going to fucking cave. And I might. I fucking might. I don't know. But you don't know unless you try. And I think I'm doing okay. I, I really, I, I've drank heavily. Um... Without having a cigarette the other day, uh, I drank my coffees, which of course was a deadly combo. Coffees and a dart. It's tough to beat. Um, I've been able to get through that shit, and I honestly think that that's probably the hardest. So I think I'm doing okay. My body's starting to reject some of these toxins from tobacco, and I feel like shit, and I think that's a good thing. <laughs> I, I mean, how often do you hear that? I, You know, it's a good thing when you start feeling like shit. Maybe that's a song. But yeah, it's been an interesting uh, little process here so far. I feel like ass. Um, and I, I'm hoping that, you know, no bylaw officer asks me to leave. I can drive and all that shit, but I'm, I'm really not feeling well. I'm really not feeling super good. Um, and I'm hoping to, that everything kind of works out the next day with this interview and all that kind of shit. And then I can kind of move on. And not just that, folks, I'm uh, also looking, I've contacted a number of promoters here in Vancouver, so hopefully I can get some shows up and going. One thing that I got to say is my genre of music is such a fucking hard sell. It's really difficult to um, pitch this shit. This one fellow was like, yeah, okay, uh, what kind of music do you play? And... Oh, man, it was really difficult, not just trying to explain it, but like trying to pitch to him like, dude, trust me, you're going to enjoy it. Trust me, your audience is going to be fucking, they're going to really enjoy this style of music. It's just different. And I understand that you normally book metal shows, but I can play with fucking metal bands. I've played with grindcore bands. I've played with country and Western bands, folk, blues, all this shit, rock and roll, punk. I've literally played with almost every genre of music and I can seem to make it work, but it's a really hard sell to pitch to somebody. So I am waiting to hear back from this guy. Hopefully I can get something. It'd be really nice to start making a little bit of extra money. I actually signed up for uh, some background work in the film industry. I'm a full actor member, so it surprisingly is pretty good money, even just standing around being a blur in the background. So we'll see how that goes. I need to make some money before I head down uh, to California because I'm going to need it there. Um, so I'm kind of in this position right now where I'm starting to gear up for the summer. I'm starting to get my feet fucking muddy. I'm starting to, uh, you know, release some things. I've got a brand new song coming out April 15th called Do You Want to Die? That's in, shit, 11 days from now. Make sure um, to definitely check that out. Let me know what you think. This is the first time I've released something like this 
uh, in a long time, uh, and especially this layered and this kind of fleshed out. So I'd love to know what you think. It's definitely very relevant with what's going on in today's world, and I figured now was the best time to get it out and let you all know that I'm still playing music. It's just a slower process. I recorded this in my van. I recorded the music video all myself. I've done every single thing myself, so it's a lot different than... You know, a band going into a studio and having a, a an engineer just kind of guide them through the shit. I'm a critical son of a bitch. <laughs> I can do things over and over and over until I, I grow old at this point. You know, uh, I'm my own worst critic. But that being said, folks, thank you so much. I, I uh, you know, this this was a strange episode. Um, I wanted to talk about um, some of the movies that I've been watching, like The Wizards of the Lost Kingdom. Uh, maybe I'll get into a movie thing at, at another date. Um, but definitely, if if you want to have a good old time and you're doing fuck all, you smoke a joint and you're tired of Hollywood, definitely check out. It's on YouTube called Wizards of the Lost Kingdom. What a fucking riot of a film this is. It's got so much charm. It's so cheap and fun. It's bad. And um, definitely give that a shot because it's. It, we watched it the other day and it really kind of brought me back to filmmaking at its funnest if that's the proper way of putting it. But thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Um, I will not be drinking Crazy Monkey tonight. Uh, I hope you do, but I am staying off the booze for a while until I get better. I'm not feeling so fucking hot. It's probably not a good idea that I'm drinking uh, buttloads of vodka when I'm feeling this way. So I'm going to try and just get better over the next few days, and I'll keep you all posted. You all know that. So thank you so much. For being, you know, a part of this, I I feel lately that I've been able to be a little bit more candid um, with you guys, and honestly, me doing this really sick made me realize how comfortable I am sharing with you guys, um, whether it's really personal shit or stuff like regarding my work or my craft or my art, uh, my my artistic projects. I've just been feeling like. You know, it's kind of opening and broadening up to a point where I can really be brutally honest with you. And like I said, I could have easily done this in a couple days when I was feeling better. But I thought, no, this is exactly the point of this. It's all about raw honesty and organic kind of content. So thank you so much for if you made it this far, because I understand my voice is probably awful. It's just like fucking nails on a chalkboard. And I'm sure my face is just like impossible to fucking watch. I'm sure... You know, you're definitely not watching the screen at this point. And that's fine. That's fine. Just want to let you know that I'm only human, man. I'm only fucking human. So thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's episode. I really appreciate it. All your comments, I, I, I read them all. So please let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any kind of advice for a new, uh, not vapor, but somebody who's quitting smoking. Is there any kind of tactics that, that helped you get through this awful fucking time? What, how did you deal with this smoker's flu and all this shit? I really am quite curious. Rather than seeing some asshole online that I don't know, he's going to you know tell me a totally different story than somebody that, you know, at least we have a little bit of a rapport together. So please, let me know what you guys think. Are you guys pissed off that I'm quitting smoking? Is this kind of cutting away from uh, that badass image? <laughs> or are you guys going to be like, fuck this guy. Now he's got to change the intro song. No, I'm not going to change the intro song. Ultimately, even if I do quit smoking, I'm still a fucking smoker. It's like an alcoholic who quits booze. He'll always be a fucking alcoholic, no matter if he's drinking or not. And I am still a fucking smoker. So I ain't changing the intro. But thank you so much, folks. If you guys do want to support my channel, you can always go to buymeacoffee.com slash Johnny No Cash. You can buy me a beer or a coffee, depending on what the hell you want me to drink that day. But it all goes right back into, into this content, into new content, into helping you guys fucking get some new shit out of me. It's very inspiring. It makes me know that you guys care. Uh, if you want to check out some of the music, it's all over Spotify. It's all on Bandcamp, bandcamp.com, uh, johnnynocash.bandcamp.com. You can get some merch over there, shot glasses, bandanas, all that kind of cool shit. And uh, yeah, keep your eyes and ears peeled. 
April 15th, Do You Want to Die? The most punk rock song I have ever written. One of the most angry songs I have ever written. So I hope you enjoy it. So thank you so much, guys. I will be in touch, and you definitely will fucking hear from me in a week, and I will give you an update on how shitty I feel. So until then, you better stay dusty. I'm out. I'm living in a van playing outlaw too. Life with Johnny No Cash. Smoking them smokes and drinking that booze. Life with Johnny No Cash. Where I go, how the fuck don't know I'm off the grid. I'm Dusty Rose. There ain't no better way of eating beans.